February, there was a, a vicious missile attack in the early hours of the morning when over 45 Katusha rockets were fired uh, in a tight tra trajectory into the most densely populated part of Camp Liberty where people were sleeping. Uh, the attack continued for about 15 minutes, highly unusual in terms of terrorist attacks in uh, Iraq. It seems from all the evidence that we have had, uh, including from an Iraqi military expert who visited the camp uh, and looked at the aftermath of this attack which killed eight people, maimed and dismembered ten and left ninety seriously injured. The Iraqi military expert uh, said that these Katusha rockets must have been fired from around 3.5 kilometers distance, which is well within the security compound that surrounds Camp Liberty, and could only possibly have been done with the full cooperation of the Iraqi government themselves. Uh, there is very good intelligence now that the attack was coordinated between the Iranians, the Quds Force, uh, with the coordination and cooperation of the Iraqi government themselves. And to this day, no armored vests or hard hats have been allowed into Camp Liberty. And I have to ask the question, why not? Or uh, perhaps uh, Colonel Wes Martin will be able to give us some answers to some of these queries. When we were persuaded in this uh, House to put pressure on the PMI to move from the relative safety of uh, Camp Ashraf to Camp Liberty, uh, we were told that their security and safety would be absolutely guaranteed. And we had the Americans, the EES, Baroness Ashton herself, uh, and the UN guaranteeing that the safety and security of these people would be of paramount importance and their safety would be guaranteed. We were shown, uh, I remember Aleka Bidal Quadras and I were shown by uh, the uh, special representative of the United Nations Secretary General, Martin Kobler, uh, a huge book of photographs of Camp Liberty and our conclusion after seeing these photographs was, well, you know, this looks like a, a very uh, good place for these people to move to. It's only half a square kilometer. It's very small. But we were assured that there would be a revolving door scenario where the people moving from uh, Ashraf to Liberty would be uh, interviewed, assessed for refugee status, given their refugee uh, status, and then immediately resettled to third countries. Uh, I was told by uh, Antonio Guterres himself, the uh, Secretary General of the UNHCR, uh, that this revolving door scenario would operate, and that meanwhile the people would be expected only to stay in Camp Liberty for a very short period of time. I can tell you now that in uh, more than uh, a year, more people have left uh, Camp Liberty in body bags than have been resettled. It is absolutely outrageous. So we were deceived. We discovered that the book of photographs which we were shown by Martin Kobler had been photoshopped and doctored with the staff of UNAMI, and you'll hear this from Tahar Bamedra, the staff at UNAMI repeatedly told that the quality of the photographs was not good enough and they had to be improved and improved again and again and photoshopped and all evidence of any uh, deterioration removed from these photographs. We were deceived in that respect. And we then put pressure on the people of Camp Ashraf to move to Camp Liberty guaranteeing their safety. They have now been viciously attacked, eight of them dead, and I feel partly responsible for that. And it's strange that before the 3,100 uh, moved from Ashraf to Liberty, there were 17,500 concrete T-walls around Camp 
liberty to provide protection for the former American military base from specifically rocket and mortar attacks. All 17,500 T walls were removed before the first of the Ashraf residents moved into the flimsy uh, cabins that they now have to occupy in this tight half square kilometer uh, area. And we have to ask why, despite the protests of the people of uh, Camp Ashraf, why were these T walls removed? leaving them absolutely vulnerable, sitting ducks to attack. So there are some key uh, demands that we now uh, feel inclined to make. First of all, the T-walls have to be restored immediately. Uh, there are armored vests and hard hats which are lying in Camp Ashraf. It would take one small truck to transport them to Camp Liberty. They must immediately, today, be taken to uh, Camp Liberty. Uh, medical equipment must be uh, given access to Camp Liberty. They were denied the right to take their medical equipment from uh, Camp Ashraf to Camp Liberty. Why is the Iraqi government preventing the building of concrete bunkers or shelters where the people could shelter in the case of another attack? Why, when Martin Kobler agreed that the uh, ground space of half a square kilometer could be extended by an additional two and a half square kilometers, the space is there, it's empty, it's vacant. If he had lived up to his pledge, which he gave face to face in Paris, there would have been fewer casualties on the 9th of February because they would have been more widely dispersed within a two and a half to three kilometer uh, square area. Why has that pledge not been fulfilled? Seriously now, I have to question why Martin Cobbler is putting pressure on uh, the residents of Camp Liberty to return to business as usual. He is pleading with the international community to put pressure on them to resume the interview process with the UNHCR for their refugee status as if nothing has happened, as if there had been no uh, attack on the 9th of February, no one had died. Business as usual, let's get back to uh, business.